James P. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. Another week has blown by. Blown by. Welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. And you can also call us uh, Progressive Discussions if you uh -huh. want. Uh, what was that guy? Remember that guy, Ernest? You can call me, you can call me uh, Sal, and you can call me. No, that was another comedian. Thinking of somebody else, but anyway, I'm your host uh, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. I am coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and I am here with my uh, longtime uh, co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this week, sir? Jerry! That's a good answer. I, well, I, I put shows some, energetic energy, no? I, 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 hey. I, I put lemon oil on my blackthorn shillelagh in the areas that it needed it for the first time. You didn't time. put no pledge in there? Well, it was a, it, I have that too. It was a, a generic brand, uh -huh. you know, the kind that says, uh, Shine, cleans, conditions, moisturizes, you know. Mm. Destroys. They don't say that, that about uh, sensual lubricants, do they? Uh, I've never had any need for sensual lubricants. <laughs> Excuse me, the ragweed is high, so I have to fix my eyeballs. I didn't hear nothing about ragweed. I know what a mold is high, a uh, moderate. And Maybe it's that, the mold uh, spores because the uh, uh, pollen. I is brought moderate. I brought my homeopathic uh, tablets, sublingual, just in case. I know something's well, something's see, out uh, there. Usually ragweed comes at this time. It, oh, I haven't heard any. When I say this time, it is the um, the beginning of September 2015. We've had. Um, unseasonably hot Ugh. summer, strange summer. First it was uh, it's wet, then it dried out, then we had a thunderstorm, and we had 90 degree plus days We're with high more humidity. Rain today. Huh? We're getting more rain today, which we need. Extremely humid. Which we need. Extremely humid. Nine, like I said before, 90 degrees plus uh, usually the weather is cool at this time of year, but not with climate change. Um, formalities. I would like to say greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And I want to thank my good friend, uh, former WWE uh, uh, star, and uh, personal trainer extraordinaire, Boca Raton, Florida, Mr. Ken Thiessen of KT Training to win for the uh, very uh, uh, nice historic photos of the ancient use of Indian clubs from India. Thank you for those photos. And uh, as you well know, I uploaded them in, in the, my fitness group. Um, <laughs> Where should I begin? Uh, you might want to tell them what day it is. Well, it's, it's the day after 9-11. So it must be 9-12. <laughs> yeah. 2015. Yeah. That's, that's 9-12, 2015. That's the date. Um, Saturday. Um, Saturn's day. Saturn's day. Yes. Well, I call, let's call it Catter Day since you like cats. Call it Catterday. How about that? 
They, but they might as well have a day, you know. I mean, they ignore people. That's what they, they do, right? Remember the commercial? The cats the guy, do, yeah. The guy's in quicksand. Hey, hey, hey. boy. Hey, go get help, boy. And, oh, too late. They, cats ignore people. That's what they do. They, they don't ignore you when they want something. Oh. They're, they're very much like a chick, a woman. Especially the pretty ones. They, they, the only time they come at you with a big smile is when they want something. You know who told me that? Who? Uh, 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 an, um, an, uh, an old supervisor, of, uh, a black female named Toshiba. Huh? She says, James, when a, when a good looking girl uh, 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 approaches you with a smile, that means she wants something. And she well, was right. I guess I've never seen a pretty girl approach me. Yeah, they smile. they generally uh, they generally get um, overwhelmed by men going up to them with their tongues hanging out. Generally, they get a lot of attention because what the tongues? Uh, they get spoiled by men approaching them. I mean, I, I, I'm not the type. I'm like Billy Morrow. I don't believe in chasing or pursuing anybody. If they if somebody really likes you, they will give you signals. Day, yeah. Signals, body language, eye contact. Well, if you're standing there with your tongue out, they might want to have some oral sex too, you know. Well, you or, know. or if, if if you're if you're acting desperate, they uh, oh, they might that. they might figure, hey, this guy's a this guy's a a potential sucker, man. He's kissing my ass big time. I could I could play this guy. I could play this guy for a lot of free dinners and drinks and and favors and 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 uh, not even give it give him any sex. Hey, that's what goes through the mind of the American modern American woman. Ooh. Opportunistic play how to opportunities on who they can play, who they can screw over in their benefit. Opportunist. It sounds a lot like the corporate oligarch society we have in the United States where everybody is uh, um, motivated by greed and selfishness and the get way of life and, 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 way and of life. dishonesty, uh, deregulation, unethical behavior <laughs> is accepted as the norm. Yeah, as the, the bankers norm. don't go to jail. No, the, the kid but that... You the carrying kid, a half a, gr half a gram of marijuana Go to jail. Go to jail. But the real crooks on Wall Street have yet to see the inside of a jail prison cell, cell or yeah. even even a yeah. county clink. Of course. All right. I want to. Um, I have one thing to say. I mean, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Something's always pissing me off because it, it, it's you know ever since Republicans sort of got control of deregulated businesses the consumer really is not respected anymore I, I think they're they show contempt for the consumer you know customer service is like they all have an attitude well you know we're actually doing you a favor by selling you our product or service you know and uh, w once in a great while you find a good value uh, some things Sometimes I see good stuff, like like the, the, the supermarket chain, I think it's owned by Germans, they're called Aldi's. Uh, you have to bring your own bags. But anyway, they're selling what looks like, it, it's called the slow juicer, which if it's a slow juicer, it's the type of juice extractor that gets more juice and nutrients out of the produce. It doesn't go, it doesn't go through it fast which is a good juicer. It might be a masticating juicer. Now... It masturbates? Yeah, masturbating juicer. It, masturbating jer it jerks juicer. you off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Masticating. Anyway, it has, just like the modern, the expensive juicers, it has a chute where the... Chute? Uh, well, a, a, a compartment where, the, where they call it a pulp ejector, where as you're oh, putting the produce through it, the pulp is not clogging up the inside of the uh, machine. It's going into into an exterior bin or, or, or uh, 
silo, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. And it's in all these 60 bucks. Hey, I never heard of the company. Uh -huh. I read I read the information on the box. Uh -huh. It looked good. What the hell, man? What, what if you paid the 60 bucks and you ended up with a good machine? It's possible. I mean, you know, to, to buy a good juicer, you have to spend a few hundred dollars, but... You used to. You used to. Well, no. There's, there's a lot of companies that make them, but, uh, I mean, it really... German Engineering. They well, may have brought the cost down. Well, everything in... Every, I know this sounds like a plug for all of these, but... Even all the store brand items in all these are, I've had them. They're, they're, they're better quality uh -huh. than, than even the name brand products See? in a regular supermarket. Yeah, I read the, I know how to read labels. And I read the ingredients, and the ingredients, nine times out of ten, are good. Mm -hmm. And so is the flavor. So, you know, I don't know if there's a connection between Germans and quality, but... Deutschland, also number one in green energy, Germany. I'm going to give you seven bells. Now I'm, I'm ready. Mike Huckabee. Oh my God. And uh, what a big phone. Mike Huckabee. And um, the the inbred looking very ugly, racist, homophobe, uh, uh, ha hateful, uh, uh, um, w uh, freak with the big giant forehead. I mean, I know he. I, I know the uh, evangelical cultist lunatic uh, went right to the jail that she was in. Kim Davis. Kim Davis, for those of you that... Another phony baloney Christian. Yeah, this is the, I, 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 this is the uh, person, the hateful person, very ugly too, may, may I say again, uh, that uh, refused to give marriage license. Now we talk to about people's looks. Mr. Trumpy did it the other day with Carly Fiorina, and they're on his ass now. Carly Fiorina is one of the ugliest. Well, that's what he was saying. Political candidates that I have ever seen in my life, with the crooked lip, and uh, I mean, she she makes she makes Ann Coulter look pretty. Look like something out of Playboy, huh? Oh, I wouldn't go that far, man. Yeah. But anyway, what was I saying before I was interrupted? You were talking about Kim, Kim Davis, Kim Davis. Mr. Fuckerby. Huxterby. Yeah, well, yeah. Mike Huxterby, Huckerby, the uh, uh, cultist, evangelical, zealot, religious freak. That's what they're, they are. This is the Mike Huckerby, Kim Davis freak show. Mm -hmm. He went to her jail uh, uh, for for attention, for media attention. Mm -hmm. He wanted to play, he wanted to turn her into some kind of martyr. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be the one, you, you notice all the photo ops, it was always Kim mm -hmm. Davis with Mike Huckabee, more than anybody else, with the exception of a photograph with Ted Cruz, but mostly it was Mike Huckabee. He did it to, to draw attention to himself because he's a 2016 Republican a loser. presidential candidate, a loser. And he did it for to get in the spotlight, not because, in reality, not because he really cares about this freak of nature, Kim Davis. Uh, he used her as a pawn uh, for himself. Uh -huh. uh, of course, Kim Davis probably got all uh, flustered and um, uh, uh, flattered by the fact that Huckabee was in the jail cell. Who the hell knows? what took place between the two, but um, she's, she's, abs she's, she's the, probably the greatest or one of the greatest walking advertisements for birth control that I've ever seen, it is Kim Davis. But you know, she refused to give marriage license to the gay people. 
she uh, it's insubordination it's against her job she was not doing her job unfortunately she was elected so she can't be fired she can only be impeached and uh, Huckabee was there to get that spotlight and they set her free and of course the freak was smiling ear to ear with her hands up in the air like evangelical born-again nuts do they got their hands like almost like they're almost like they're a Wi-Fi antenna to God or maybe to somebody else their hands are up in the air and, and, and she looks like she's taking a shit with her eyes closed you know the, the usual phony show-off way of praying that these born-again evangelicals do you know they they when they pray they do it publicly and they show off when they do it well uh, this phony baloney Christian she's been divorced four times yeah four times married five or something like that now the Bible of course says you should only get divorced for one reason and one reason only and that's fornication now I wonder did the husbands fornicate or something and and that's why she was divorced but they allowed divorce she's divorced for any other reason why the, the Bible allows divorce for adultery is what you're saying that's correct that's the only thing so it's death it's death to you part except for adultery correct okay now and the only reason that God allowed divorce was because of uh, Ancient Israel, you know, doing so much bad, bad, bad under Moses that he gave in. Yeah. Well, this woman obviously is um, enjoying the spotlight, uh, the, probably the most attention she ever received in her life, and 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 the mo and the only attention she's going to receive unless the uh, unless the right wingers uh, give her a job give her her own talk show or something it's ridiculous like that mm -hmm. but uh you know she's um she's hateful uh bigoted and she's not afraid to let you know it she uh -huh. rubs it in your face see that see that's the part i know there's lots of hateful bigots out there you have a right to think the way you want to think I mean you have that right it's your choice but to shove it in everyone's face and to uh, show off that you're a, a, a devout Christian when you know nothing about the Bible these people know nothing about the inside of the Bible but there's even something more they're not Christians they important. keep on calling themselves Christians there's something even more important than that what? she is involved in business and we have discrimination laws, so you cannot discriminate in commerce oh, in the United right. States of America. That's right. There was a girl in um, was it that's uh, correct. Ohio it's, or Iowa? I think it was an ice cream parlor or something. It, it, she she refused to serve gay customers with the same money everybody else has. Yeah. She and and this is a, a state where where the uh, Republican, where well, the governor is very, also very bigoted and a right-wing Republican. I think it was either... Well, what did Mr. Wall, what did Mr. Wallace do? Was it Ohio? Ohio? Yeah, it was a Midwestern state. What, what did Mr. Wallace do? Dixie Crack, George Wallace? Yeah. Oh, Stood in front of the goddamn university door to not in, let in the blacks. Well, he wasn't shy about letting you know it either. Of course not. They were all in your face and they either they know the, uh, the United States is contains that many supportive bigots and racists that or they know or it's because the Republicans have control of the uh, Congress and the Senate I don't know what reason they have for not being ashamed of the way they are and, you know they have that in your face personality about yeah and then they and then they say you're attacking Christianity now religious freedom is the freedom to practice the religion of your choice but not to force your religion on other people bingo no the definition of religious freedom is not that the bible says you're not supposed to go to house to house what do the evangelicals do 
Oh, who the hell wakes you up at nine o'clock in the morning on Saturdays? Proselytizing. I think they changed their day. Actually. Jehovah Witness. Yeah. No, all of them proselytize. Yeah. All of them force their b beliefs on you. Oh, the Catholic Church killed fifty million. The Mormons. They're doing that. The Mormons. Uh, 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 not often, but they they've been known to go door to door. The uh, the evangelical or whatever you want to call them, uh, born again uh, wackos. Uh -huh. They uh, they proselytize. Yes. They they say that it is, it is their job to go out and spread the word, save souls. Otherwise, uh, 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 in the words of Ken Create, when you die, you won't get the uh, extra rewards in heaven. If you don't do any good works, if you don't do any... He's going to be alone in heaven because nobody goes to heaven except he who yeah. came down. Well, he was trying to tell me that there are there are different neighborhoods in heaven. Yeah. You know, you want... You in want to, heaven, there are my father has many mansions. You want to live in a bungalow or do you want to live in a mansion? It, it, he made it sound like that. Well, the first resurrection, the first fruits are going to be in Jerusalem with Jesus they're not going to be in heaven the first fruits the first fruits that's yeah. the, the elect 144,000 yeah 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 everybody else that ha that has ever died it's is not their time will continue to take the big dirt sleep for the millennium at least yeah so these people that think they're going to be raptured up flying up in the air now now uh, some of the adult cartoons have done satire about the rapture and about these uh, evangelical nuts and you know they showed uh, one episode of um, uh, American Dad where they're like they're fly people are flying up near naked or you know like when they you know this one's left behind this one's taken that one's left behind and they're all naked they're all ascending into the sky <laughs> is Jesus coming down because that's what the Bible says. They will ascend as Jesus is coming down. Anytime Jesus made an appearance in this cartoon, he talked like a California hipster surfer dude. <laughs> hey man, hey man, buddy, hey bubba. Yeah, they, yeah, they had him like that, you know. So. Anyway, hey, on South Park, Jesus has his own weekly talk show. There you go. I guess if you're if you're making a cartoon, you know, Anything's possible, but in in uh, because we're doing a show about the uh, evangelical counterfeit Christian cultists, uh, Kim Davis and uh, Mike Huckabee, um, I've decided to uh, uh, I don't want to say honor them, but you know, pay homage to them by taking up serpents. Watch he doesn't bite. Oh yeah, take you know how the these weirdos, these cultists down south, what are they like? A certain, uh, certain type of Baptist. They, 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 be, they have um, labels, labels, labels. They you have sermons. I mean? uh, they have sermons with snakes, with poisonous rattlesnakes. And because they, and, they had so much faith. And they dance around in the aisles with live poisonous Ooh, rattlesnakes. Yeah. And occasionally, somebody gets bit and dies. They they claim that the the Lord will will neutralize them. neutralize the venom protect them yes. protect and guess what it didn't work yeah because you know why because they ain't got the faith that's why they ain't got the what faith they got the wrong God how do you expect any kind of benefits if you got the wrong God. Well, uh, G.W. Bush and uh, war criminals G.W. Bush and Dick Cheney. The th wrong God told them to go into Iraq, didn't he? And and oh, and and the um, the, um, the what was it? Over a million I Iraqis died in that war. No, they got dead. They got kicked out. They the boom, the boom, the. I don't know. They're only saying two hundred and some thousand actually died. And there was no, there was no connection between uh, Saddam Hussein and Iraq. And but the, we all knew that. And the nine eleven attacks. Yes, this that was not. It was all a lie. Afghanistan, I believe there was no connection. No, there was. Bin Laden was there. Bin Laden was Saudi. But he was there in Afghanistan. 
and then later on, I guess he flees. Being to in Afghanistan for 13 years is pathetic. All it is doing is making the contractors, private contractors for the Pentagon, richer. That's all it is. Nothing has been accomplished. But all Same the, as Iraq. All these. Um, all it's these war. wars in For the Middle profit. East have been about profit. Right? War is Iraqi, and now they're and now they're um, they're uh, because of the evil, uh, lying right wing uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now they're they're uh, picking on Iran, who you know, I mean. A lot of people hate Israel uh, for justifiable reasons. Uh, or is it Netanyahu that they hate? Or, or both? Netanyahu is uh, a right-wing scoundrel. He's a right-winger. Yeah. yeah. But they all, they all, the Arabs over there, they all don't like Israel. No, no. Because Israel was dropped in front of them, in the midst of them. You know what I mean? Well, Israel is, has not... They don't not, like it has not uh, treated the Palestinians very well, from what I understand, historically. Well, yeah, but the, the point is that nobody over there treats Israel, you know, well either. They don't want it there. They don't want to, they don't recognize its existence. That's right. So, you know, if an, if a, an Iranian leader says he wants to annihilate Israel, I guess the Israelis have something to be concerned about, worried. Have I, well, I, I, they would. I, I cannot stand this Netanyahu, though. Look. You could see in his face the negativity. The if evil. that were a problem, the yeah. bulwark, the wall between Israel and Iran was once Iraq. Saddam Hussein had a war with uh, Iran for many years. That's true. And uh, Ronald Reagan stuck his nose in there somewhere. So while that was going on... Supplied arms, too. So that while that was going yeah. on, Iran, you know, could not do anything against Israel. But guess what? George W. Bush, they got rid of that wall. But Iran is in no shape or whatever to take on Israel. You sure about that? Absolutely. And number one, they don't have any. Uh, if you want to go to the nuclear thing, they got no nuclear bombs. Israel does. That's what I heard, yeah. So if they want to use nuclear, you know, power, Israel's got the edge there, my friend. Let me tell you, those Iranians Soldiers, the men, the way they train, they're supermen. Yeah, but a superman can be brought down by a bullet just like anybody else. Okay? In other words, Israel has the hardware and more technology than Absolutely. Iran. Okay. Why do you think they won all the wars over there that they, you know, that they won? Yeah, I don't think Iran was involved in that. Uh, no, Iran wasn't, but the script. other Arabs were. Yeah, yeah. Egypt. They, yeah. The, uh, the, and then, the, of course, Iran, uh, 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 yeah. Israel signed. The surrounding com uh, uh, um, countries. Now, the refugees, refugees, uh, are um, going everywhere except uh, to the very, very wealthy Saudi Arabia, who happens to have multitudes of air conditioned tents. That are empty that they use for the for the uh, the Haji uh, the um, yeah. the Holy well, Day. They belong in that part of the country. That's, that's the they, 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 the Saudi Arabia. Uh, Those are the people that they take we, them in. they are very very non-compliant with helping the United States, even though they're supposed to be an ally. Ah. Or is it more a business partner? There you go. A business Bingo. partner. Bingo. Ship, not an ally. United they buy Sta our weapons. The United States. That's it. They the that part of the world, at least, or maybe the whole world, expects the United States to bail everyone out. And Bernie Sanders was correct in in demanding that everybody pitch in as far as the uh, unrest in the Middle East. 
everybody, the, the NATO allies, uh, you know, European Union, uh, especially Saudi Arabia. Well, they, they've been handling Saudi Arabia with kid gloves. Uh, you know, I mean, um, not they as... They should have left it all alone. <laughs> okay? That's what they should well, have Well, their done. greed done, did them in. That's it correct. It was greed. It was out of greed that they... That they you stuck see the moolah Mr. Cheney made, and made for his Halliburton, right. don't you? And that's what it's all about. Follow the money trail, the dirty money trail. And, and they don't care if it's at the expense of your kids' lives, the children of the poor. Of the of poor. These, are, these are sociopaths, right? Yeah. The, the poor and the middle class kids don't matter to them. You saw what Kissinger said. But how rich does a does a crick a, a crickety old geezer have to be to be content? There is no content with that they, disease. They're old and crickety. What are they going to do with a, with a trillion dollars in their bank account? They want to take it with them, and they want to really? make sure their kids get it all. Ah. Taxes, no. Kids, everything. They want to. Is that is that why um, um, Barack Obama signed the Monsanto Protection Act? Because what the hell does that have to do with inheritance taxes? No, I'm talking about doing something. A politician doing something that is not too nice for underlying reasons. You know, making a wrong. The underlying decision. reasons is that uh, Monsanto gives them campaign. Right. Money. And these are Democrats. Yeah. These are I feel your pain Democrats. Somebody put out, keep, uh, uh, I've seen it a couple times over there, a post on Facebook, and it shows you down in Georgia when Alec had that meeting with the uh, Georgia uh, legislature, uh -huh. legislators, and you know, they don't want the news people to know this stuff and everything like that, but that's what it is. Yeah, Alec gives money to them, they, they write the bills, and the people put them into laws. It's as simple as that. And this is what Bernie Sanders means by the system. The and system this is what I mean by the system. It's no damn good. It's totally corrupt. And everything we talk about politically is part of our ongoing series, Capitalism in a Cock Shell. You see this cock? Feel the energy coming from King Neptune. Whoa. Or, if you're Greek, Poseidon. Capitalism in a conch shell. And, of course, you know the snake. You know, I mean, those uh, 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 inbred freaks, Mike Huckabee and Kim Davis, especially Kim Davis, they don't, they don't deserve all this media attention. I, I'm just surprised that people like that get all this FaceTime. They're Christians. Who says so? They deserve it. Who says they're Christians? The media. Prove it. The Prove media it. says it. Does the media know what Christianity no. is all about? Do they know the inside but it's of a good news story? Do, do they know the inside of a Bible? No. In other words, it's news when I guess it's it's the same type of entertaining news as Donald Trump saying something outrageous like for the fourth time I believe my daughter's got a great body and if she wasn't my daughter I'll be dating her she he said that to Howard Stern in, I've two, heard it twice. in 2003 he said it he said it again somewhere he said it on the view gee it must be something playing on his and he said it when he first entered the race. That's the two I've heard. There's something. This is really on his mind. He wants to bang his daughter. <laughs> I maybe he's taking too many male enhancement supplements. Maybe he's on overload with testosterone. He, maybe he just gets away with saying whatever the hell he wants. Because he's a multi multi billionaire. Yeah. His look, Ivanka has got a is a very hot looking young woman. Ugh, 33 why, years old. Why is she married that that Jewish mama's boy is beyond me. 
but uh, uh, instead of marrying a real macho man, you know. Macho, Yo, macho man. man. All I want to be is a macho man. snake. I'm <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you get carried away here. Remember, unrehearsed, ad lib show, anything can happen here. But, you know, seriously, she's a hot girl, but, but come on, that's his daughter, for God's sakes. It's not his stepdaughter, it's his blood daughter, you know. But anyway, getting back to the comparison. Somebody in the spotlight says something outrageous, the media jumps on it. Uh, 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 ugly, inbred, big foreheaded uh, 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 Kim Davis does something the, outrageous. The, the media. Media jumps on the it. The media immediately portrays that as an attack on Christianity. Mike, and that's why it's news. Why is it an attack on Christianity if they know nothing of Christianity? When you don't want the, the Christmas cat, cat crash anywhere on public buildings, you are attacking Christianity. That's how they look at this. Well, let me tell you something, uh, Mike Huckabee, Kim Davis, and Ted Cruz, and all of you. All of yous. Mr. Ben Carson, too. All please. of yous. Where's my shillelagh? Put him in there, too. Let me put the snake down because he's gotten enough. He's using he's that getting, goddamn he's getting, Christianity phony crap. He's getting too much uh, video time here. But I like him. I like him. He's, you know what? Let me keep him over here near me. Taking up serpents. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, our f I got news for all you Republicans that are religious cultists. Our founding fathers specifically wrote into the Constitution that church and state were to be separate at all times, religion was never to be involved in politics, and for very good reason. Okay? They didn't write that into the Constitution. And by the way, even if Kim Davis and Mike Huckabee were really nice, wonderful people and real Christians, that still doesn't give them the right to interfere with politics and with governing and the Constitution. The Constitution is the law, not the Bible. Even if they were the most wonderful Christians in the world, I don't care how wonderful they are. You don't mix church and state and there's a very good reason for it. If they Take it were over. real good Christians, they would not be involved in the world. Yeah, put them up here. Okay? They won't be involved the in Bible this. The Bible says to not become part of the world. Right. It says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and render unto God that which is God's. Right. You're not supposed to, uh, the spiritual, uh, Way of life is not part of uh, Satan's world, material world. Uh, 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 material world, material girl. That was Madonna, right? Da, da, da. Uh, secular world. Secular world, secular. I'm sorry. It is Satan's world, of course. Yeah. But. Speaking of Satan's world, speaking of politics, everything you imbecile, bonehead, teabaggers believe about. Ronald Reagan's trickle down economics was a lie. It's, it's a, it was never meant to work. What we have is siphon up to the top 20% uh, and eventually the 1%. Economics, siphon up. There is no trickling down. It, don't believe it. Even though you see me doing this, you will still continue to repeat the same old crap that Republicans are repeating. You will still believe in trickle down economics. You. You, you are idiots, you are brain cell deficient, you, you are incapable of, of grasping and understanding logic. I have to vote for billionaires. See, this guy, I have to. old man, Spock, letter, Nimoy, logic, you lack logic. You are, especially you, you brain cell deficient inbred people of Kentucky who are, don't, who don't have a pot to piss in. You don't have a pot to piss. Same thing with Mississippi and all the poor states. They don't have a pot to piss in, but they continue to vote against their best interests. They continue to vote for people that do not ever have their best interests. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Mm -hmm. Go Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. All right, now let us sink Hi. our teeth into these readings. 
Bell boy. I don't. I, I carry me own bags. I don't need to. Then I gotta tip the guy, you know. Uh huh. I support Bernie Sanders for president. Right. Sanders has advocated the same positions on major national issues over the course of his entire career. No, he's not a flip-flopper. He's consistent. I'm talking about income inequality and its fixes, taxation, and breaking up too big mm -mm. to fail banks. He also opposes overly broad surveillance powers to spy on United States citizens, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and the Keystone XL Pipeline. Yeah. It's easy for him to be consistent because these are firmly held beliefs. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, has equivocated, changed her position on or not answered questions about subjects and others. She tests the political wind before she states a position. Sometimes she stays neutral because she has allies on both sides. With Sanders, you know what you're going to get. You know he will do everything in his power to deliver on it. With Clinton, it's stay tuned for our next update. Yeah, Bernie Sanders, uh, even, even when he was marching with the civil rights pioneers back in the early 60s, he, he pretty much is, is the same. Yeah. With his progressive liberal views, he, he yeah. hasn't changed, really. Exactly. That's how you tell a person who is consistent. And you can trust a consistent person. Oh, absolutely. A lot more than a flip-flopper, you know. However, the Republican conservatives are very consistent, too. They are consistent to the point that even when it's right, they will not change. See? So you have to be wary all the time. Vigilant. You have to be vigilant. I think Mitch McConnell uh, is, was involved in, in more obstruction recently. Uh, him and his... Well, they're always going to obstruct. Yeah, they're until that black man is out of the White House. Okay? Yeah, they're always going to obstruct. Uh, they like to take a close-up of... Uh, Mitch McConnell's uh, waddly double chin and his ugly turtle face. They like to really zoom in on it. He really is uh, 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 very hard on the eyeballs. Out of money and relegated once again to the back of the pack debate, former Texas Governor Rick Perry on Friday dropped out of the race for president, ending his second bid for the Republican presidential nomination and becoming the first major candidate of the 2016 campaign to give up on the White House. Good riddance to bad rubbish and there will be more. Naturally, there oh, will, there be, will more. be more. Did uh, the ugly Carly Fiorina drop out yet? Uh, she is now allowed into the next debate. She will be on the stage. She will no longer be at the, the, the kiddies table. Carly Fiorina <laughs> with the crooked mouth and, and a ton of makeup on. Look, it looks like it was spackled on. Her uh, business uh, uh, track Acumen record is crap. Is definitely bad. Her track record has been worse, I think, than Donald Trump's. His is not she that good. She has great. also outsourced jobs. Okay. So has Mr. Trump. Of the course. Way. They. Hey, listen. Trump was bashing China so much. If you look at one of Donald Trump's uh, designer suits, yeah. and you look at the inside label, it says "Made in China." There you go. There need you I go. need I say more? <laughs> The longest serving governor in Texas history, who had never lost an election until he started running for president, 
told a group of conservative activists in St. Louis that some things have become clear and that it was time to suspend his campaign. We have a tremendous field of candidates, probably the greatest group of men and women, Perry said. I step aside, knowing our party is in good hands. As long as we listen to the grassroots, listen to that cause of conservatism. If we do that, then our party will be in good hands. Oh, yeah. Four years ago, Perry's first bid for the White House collapsed after a GOP debate in which he couldn't remember the name of the third federal agency he'd wanted to close if elected. Oops! Oops! This time around, he couldn't win enough support in early polls to even qualify for the party's prime time debates, finding himself relegated to second stage affairs. Is an income. Yeah, well, we know that, but, uh, you know, most of uh, the uh, people who run for the Republican uh, presidential uh, election are nincompoops. I'm still focusing, uh, uh, ponder, pa pondering on the, uh, the term uh, uh, conservative grassroots. Uh, I guess the Tea Party. I guess conservative grassroots, a.k.a. the Tea Party, is pretty much all about blaming everything on immigrants of color. Uh, 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 scapegoating people of color, uh, not taking personal responsibility, uh, you know, I, I pretty much blaming the poor for every day. There you thing. go. For, for that thing. one percent slice of the budget, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget about, forget about their tax dollars uh, being given away to the rich. Forget about the wasteful military spending, uh, uh, bailing out the, the Wall Street crooks. Criminals, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A rich person has no business receiving one penny of public assistance. But that's fine. Yes, they it is. Call it the subsidy. They're job producers. Yeah. That's why we have 97 million people in the United States out of work right now maybe if you're, because of all the job producing maybe if you're that's in, been going on you're in shanghai china or something you're it's a job producer or you have an office job in the philippines ah. the philippines have our office jobs you know like call centers customer service after formally kicking off his bid in early june perry announced raising about one million dollars during the first month of his campaign that wasn't enough to keep the small staffs he had assembled in the early voting states of Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, as well as at his headquarters in Texas. While some members of Perry's team pledged to work as volunteers, and he resumed paying some last month, he ultimately couldn't recover from the lack of campaign cash. It'd be easy just to keep going. Be easy to go do the debate next week. Be easy to keep going to Iowa and South Carolina and other states. And everything, taking your money and dragging it out, said Dallas businessman and longtime Perry donor Roy Bailey. But Bailey said Perry could see it was pretty obvious to him he wasn't going to be the next presidential nominee from the Republican Party. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, who took the stage at the Eagle Forum conference in St. Louis immediately after Perry announced his exit, called on the crowd to pray for Perry's future success. The only thing harder than to get into a race for something like president is to make the decision to get out. 
said Huckabee. As an aside, you'll be going soon to Huckabee. <laughs> oh, I hope so. And I hope that all of you will recognize that it was a very difficult decision. I've been there before. What about pointy nose Ted Cruz? Is he going to be uh, dropping Pinocchio. out? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Well, he should be dropping out. He's down like a six or four percent or whatever it is. I'm just so sick of seeing his squinty. He makes faces like he's taking a shit, like he's constipated. You know, he's, he, you know, and his hands are up in the air a lot too. You know, he. That's his prayer mode, you know, and he's he's squinty-eyed and grimacing, like he's uh, forcing a turd, uh, and his hands are up in the air, with that pointy schnozola, proboscis. Donald Trump spokesman, Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen, confirmed the Republican presidential hopeful has purchased NBC's half of the Miss Universe organization and settled all lawsuits against the media companies. The move, which Trump announced via Twitter on Friday morning, gives him full ownership of the Miss Universe and Miss USA pageants and completes a divorce begun in June when NBC announced it was ending its business relationship with Trump who had starred on the network as host of The Apprentice. You're fired. And The Celebrity Apprentice. Also, you're fired. The network said in June it was severing ties with Trump because of comments he made about Mexican immigrants during his presidential campaign kickoff speech. The fallout reverberated far beyond the pageant. Macy's stopped carrying a line of Trump menswear. Oh, really? Just because of that? Just because of a couple statements? A television company owned by Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim. Ah, oh, Carlos Slim, yes. I believe he was or is still was. the more richest man in the no, world. No, uh, he was. Uh, Bill Gates passed him up. Yeah, but but not recently. He I mean, sounds like a, a a poker player, doesn't he, Carlos Slim? Well, there's a Amarillo Slim. Amarillo Slim is yes. a famous poker player. He was a champ for a couple of years or one year or whatever. I don't think Slim is is his real last name, is it? Slim is not a. Um, Slim is an it's old. It's not Spanish. No, it's an old cowboy name in all the old like cowboy movies and things. Yeah, you know, like if you're in a cowboy, it's slim. If you're in a, in a city, it's slick. You're a city slicker. Mr. Haney used to say that. Hey, Mr. Douglas, you're not one of those sl city slickers, are you? Green anyway, Acres. Carlos Slim ended a project with Trump. And the PGA of America moved a golf tournament off a Trump-owned course. Wow. Wow. They were boycotting him left and right. Yes, they were. Right and left. Yeah. Oh. You got one more before lunch no, or you want to say? Mr. Sanders. Biggie. Okay, we're going to say that. We're going to uh, take lunch now. Take a break. Uh, I brought something for myself. We're going to take a lunch break and now we will be joined by How to Defeat a Conservative, Bible Verses. Just simply click pause and read and hopefully learn. And then followed by our voiceover artist William Hamilton Moore of the Third with promo and commercial. And we'll be back for the balance of this week's show.
Bill to Swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo. Mm -hmm. We are back, naturally, because you see us. You see us. Capitalism in a conch shell. Um, I was, um, I noticed on Facebook that uh, I came across this uh, web page of an organization that, uh, whose sole purpose is to um, convince people that genetic modification of food is a good thing for humanity and that, and that not, and not to believe any of the, uh, holistic uh, experts out there about what about claims about organic food it's in other words believe Monsanto and science and don't believe their science mother nature don't believe the holistic the natural approach about organics believe their science so there's an individual who has this photo that runs it and um, I don't know if you came across the banner, but there's a banner of, a, of an ear of corn that's infest, infested with worms. And he's trying to say, this is what you will get if you do not use the, if you do not grow the uh, genetically modified corn, and I'm assuming use the pesticides that are mm -hmm. killing our bees and killing us, right? Well, the pesticides are already in the GMO crop. Right. Now, a lot of people hammered him about this, uh -huh. including, including me, and uh, it says that they, uh, they either have an organic farm or they know people that have organic farms and they have never, ever seen an ear of corn, an organic ear of corn looking like this. They, actually, there is no pestilence problem on the organic farms that they're aware of, that they know of. There is no problems. The uh, produce, and I know for a fact, like with uh, uh, Stefan Santangelo's huge organic farm in Kentucky. Ooh. Okay, just want to give a shout out to Stefan Santangelo. Has a huge organic farm. He grows just about everything. He's even a beekeeper. His produce is always impeccable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The photos, the color, the size, and then he shows recipes on how he prepares them. And uh, the bees, he was telling me, I was asking him about bee products like, you know, uh, pollen, royal jelly, propolis, and honey. He says, I don't believe in taking uh, royal jelly and pollen from the hives. It's extremely important for the queen to have ample amounts of her food. And, and, and if you start taking things from the hive, you are depriving the hive of important substances for its uh, uh, maintenance, um, um, self-sustaining. Self um, well, won't they just make more? 
Well, if you start if you start exclusively taking the royal jelly yeah. uh, uh, from the commercial hives, you'll deprive the queen of what's the word homeostasis. You know, everything working in harmony perfectly. You'll upset the balance and everything. So what he's saying is that by using raw honey the way it comes straight from the hive mm -hmm. without applying any heat or anything mm. you're getting all those bee products mm -hmm. you know there's yeasts there's uh, pollen there's you know uh, you're getting all the the benefits of bee products all in one there's no need to deprive the queen anyway getting back to this page you know people are saying we never encounter this problem with natural uh, heirloom original seeds and, and and organic farming this is this is propaganda this is false propaganda from Monsanto mm -hmm. so uh, and the guy's saying uh, science science I call him a corporate whore ah. he didn't have any uh, he had a smart ass answer for me it didn't make any sense he says yeah I have every hole filled I'm a corporate whore thank you Okay, and then um, he says, um, he says, yeah, James, where's your evidence? You know, I says, well, let me tell you a little story. I told him a very brief story. I says, Doc, at one time, Dr. Gary Noah had to go to court in Washington D.C. Was it? Yeah, he, he attended. He had to go to court, and and uh, it had to do with. Um, I think it had to do with. Uh, Gary you know, versus uh, uh, the um, officialdom of food. I don't know if it was the food industry, I don't know if it was about GMOs, but it had to do with nutrition. That was a debate. It, right, and, and Gary you No know, brought stacks and stacks of evidence with him. Uh -huh. But the kangaroo court, the kangaroo federal court, did not bother to. Uh, it wasn't court. Huh? It wasn't. Court. It was a debate. It was a debate. The people at this debate on the other side did not bother to acknowledge or read Gary Knoll's stacks and stacks of evidence. That's correct. So you could have all the evidence you want. I told them. Yeah. But if if the system is rigged and nobody listens to you and nobody even reads what you have. That's it. It's a kangaroo court. It's the best way I can explain it. He had no reply, of course. No reply. Well, of course not. So I just want to. Who's you know, supporting his website? Maybe Monsanto is. There you go. Because he was very pro Monsanto. There you go. And he said every hole is filled. There if I'm you calling go. him a corporate or he says every every hole is filled. So I'm glad. There you go. I'm glad his holes are filled. I'm sure his bank account is filled too. There you go. That's that. The uh, Bernie Sanders phenomenon has been almost entirely driven by white supporters. Now he's out to overcome hurdles with prospective black voters who are still learning about him. The Latinos are, are going for him, I heard. And could shape whether his underdog campaign for 2016, Democratic nomination, can last. All he's got to do is show him all the activity that he partook in during the Civil Rights Movement. Sanders, who organized sit-ins over segregated housing as a college student during the Civil Rights Movement, must cut into Hillary Clinton's advantage with African Americans if he is to do well in South Carolina's February 2016 primary, where more than half the voters are expected to be black, and in other southern states that follow in March. Polls find that the independent Vermont senator, building a lead over Clinton in New Hampshire and closing the gap in Iowa, two mainly white States, very much unlike the more diverse Super Tuesday states of Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Virginia, and others. Well, I heard one 
very popular black civil rights leaders uh, backing Sanders. One, one came out. One came for a guy with a beard. I don't, I, yeah, and there are a couple others uh, backing uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Carson. Mr. Carson. Why? Because he's black. Why? Because, because he's black. See, you see how people oh, are. Uh, oh, now just a moment. They're not all inclusive in America, His are they? His spiel actually did not mention anything about being black. But it did mention all the old crap about Republicans that don't exist anymore. Oh, the 1950s Eisenhower? 1860. Abraham Lincoln. About First of Republican. all, Abraham Lincoln, in Abraham Lincoln's days, there was no social services to help the poor. So I don't know where all these blacks that got freed from slavery, where they went to, how they put food on the table, you know, where they had, where they lived. They still had to deal with with extreme racism back then. So this, you know, and however, Abraham Lincoln is put in, on in an ivory tower, a little too high up, in my opinion. Well, I'm I'm saying about the point of yeah. the Republican Party right. at that time, which was for the blacks. So they still think those are the days. They write off 1965 with the civil rights movement. Where Mr. Republic, uh, Republican, President Johnson said, We have written off the South for generations to come. There was a switch. The Democrats now looked like the Republicans. And the Republicans now looked like the Dixiegrats. You know, what, you know what would really help Sanders with the black vote is if he said, um, um, no one will be no one will be above the law if a police officer executes a black citizen unarmed black citizen without justification he will be tried like any, anybody else I think that will go over pretty well with the uh, black life matters movement it may but a president is not able to do things of that nature why not it's a law yeah well, who makes the law? Well, what... Uh, uh, the president make laws? Well, how did it come about that, that cops uh, suddenly were above the law? How did that come about? It's called the grand jury. The grand jury does not convict them. Oh, really? Oh, really? Interesting. It's called they, corruption. They just don't convict them. They don't them convict them. Because they feel like not convicting them. Because what would happen? If bad cops all of a sudden started getting hanged, etc., you think all cops would be a little afraid to do their duties? You know? Well, we have lots of cameras nowadays. Bad or good? You know, uh, if 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 hey, if your conscience is clear and you didn't, you know, and the, the perpetrator had a weapon and came at you, then. You have justifiable reason to. I think Amadou uh, 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 had a wallet. Oh, those wallets will kill you, baby. Huh? Yeah, he like he went for his house keys or something. Wallet. Yeah, and they and they put like a, a fifty ho uh, bullets in him. That's correct. And he was in front of his house too. That's correct. You can't even go home. No. As a black person. The independent Vermont senator and his advisors say his policies and personal story can resonate among black voters if the campaign can reach them. He says he plans to emphasize his personal efforts more as he campaigns, beginning this weekend, with a swing through Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. I believe when the African-American community in South Carolina 
and around the country understands that I have one of the strongest civil rights records in Congress and was involved in the civil rights movement for many years before I went to Congress and will respond. That would mark a shift from recent months at several appearances in South Carolina. In August, he drew overwhelmingly white audiences and he hasn't talked much about his civil rights past. Instead, he's been linking his policy pro uh, proposals to challenges in the African-American community, citing dire economic statistics for blacks, blasting private for-profit prisons, and their role in incarceration of young black males. And they're, they're suing, these private prisons are suing states for not providing enough slave labor, <laughs> I, I hear. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> and bemoaning uh, institutional racism and militarization of local police forces. Sanders said his emphasis on policy over his biography has been intentional. Recounting his involvement with the Congress of Racial Equality and his arrest for protesting segregated housing at the University of Chicago in 1960s. Sanders said he was proud of the work he did, but it's not anything I like to brag about. It's much more important for me to tell people what I will do as president and how it affects them. Still, he acknowledged that Clinton and her husband, former President Bill Clinton, have a long history with black voters. While Sanders has built his career in Vermont, where 95% of the population is white. Clinton, who also has outlined proposals to address what she sees as the over incarceration of black men, economic inequality and problems with access to voting, has already picked up support from South Carolina Democrats, um. including two former governors. One of them, 2014 Senate candidate Joyce Dickerson, argued that Sanders is too far behind to catch up. Not catch anymore. up with the black vote, you mean? Or no, general? No, Clinton. Oh. He's now 41%, she's 40. I think he did catch up and went ahead. A little bit ahead, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. I did. There's I did nothing that. like a little bit ahead. He was a little bit behind before, not too long ago. You know? <laughs> little levity. A little bit ahead. I called Bernie Sanders after losing my race, and no one ever called me back at all, said Dickerson. A longtime councilwoman in Richland County, home to the state capital of Columbia. I got more than 400,000 votes. If he's not interested in my thoughts, in my list of voters, why should I be interested in him? Did you call her back? Said Sanders, we have a lot of work to do. The senator has emphasized his connections to black leaders in recent weeks and plans to campaign with the academic and civil rights leader Cornell West. I think that I think that was him. Does he have a beard? That's him. He met last month in Chicago with Reverend Jesse Jackson. Reverend Jesse Jackson, yes. Whom he twice endorsed for president in the nineteen eighties. Chris Covert 
Sanders' state director in South Carolina, said, the campaign has 15 full-time staff members on the ground with offices in Columbia and Charleston. More offices will be opening soon. It's not that the message isn't resonating with African American community. It's that we haven't communicated with them yet. That's true. I, I believe that. And, uh, uh, what, what Bernie Sanders has to offer, okay, the poor, the middle class, and minorities, and the type of America that you will get with Bernie Sanders is much more positive and advantageous for people of color than with a corporatist like Hillary Clinton. I think I think the you know the blacks are much better off with that the form of government, the form of America that Bernie Sanders uh, wants. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully. The Democrats will gain some seats in 2016 in the Senate. I, I don't know who is up for re-election. The it, Senate is quiet now for the House six and years, I believe. When you say quiet, you mean they're on vacation or they're dead? No, or? They, the ones that were elected are good for six years now. The ones that were elected yeah. in, in uh, 2014? Yeah. The ones that were elected. Now, are, are there others that are up for re-election? Yes, in theory, uh, there's uh, uh, every six years or whatever it is, every uh, one third of the Senate is up for re-election, something like that. Now, do you see how fucking brain cell deficiently imbecilic Americans are? I just can't get over those poor slobs in Kentucky re-electing Mitch McConnell. You know, a miserable, slithering creature like him, a mud turtle from the swamp. I, I, I just can't understand it. And you know what? This I have a feeling you're going to bring up their cult religion and their pastors. Let me tell you something. If you don't see, if you're too lazy to open up the Bible and understand it, and you listen to some lunatic pastor then you got problems well there's another problem too the Bible is not available to be understood by all what about sorry what about it what about um, just by it, reading what it. about the inbred big foreheaded Kim Davis that is all fucked up with her her um, ideas on Christianity yeah well where'd she get him totally fucked up Where'd she get him? That's my point. And Huckabee too. It goes back to uh, the first thing about the adultery. They involved. They, they, the they only elect reason for divorce. Yeah, they elected Huckabee as governor of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. We also elected Bill Clinton. Which doesn't say much for people in Arkansas to elect Mike Huckabee and Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, but Bill Clinton is. <laughs> I'd rather have Bill Clinton than Mike Huckabee. <laughs> back to McConnell. Back to McConnell. It is not without standing that the voting could have been corrupt. It was in Florida with Gore. It was in Ohio with Bush. And they got away with it. And they got away with it. No investigation. In each case. So if you find out that the the voting machines in Kentucky were computerized. Then it's quite obvious it was corrupt. And these are people that can look look at themselves in the mirror too, and look look you in the eye. And well, they're winners, and that's all important. Oh yeah, Donald Trump sounding you like know? he sounds like Charlie Sheen now. Winner, we're a winner. Ah. And I, I, we're all winners. If I'm a winner, you're a winner. I'm, I'm into winning, and what do you say? I, 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 we're going to win bigly. United he, States is going to win bigly, yes. Bigly. Bigly. He invented a new word. That's an adverb. Is it a real word, though? No. <laughs> bigly. 
I know there's an actor named uh, Bagley, right? Bagley. Bagley or Bagley Jr. Ed Begley Jr. Ed Begley Jr. <laughs> Who also, by the way, if he I'm not sue. mistaken. He should sue Trump for what? Ed Begley Jr. is green. And he should sue Trump for using his name. His house is green, etc. Oh, really? I believe so. Yes, I believe so. And uh, um, the... Uh, Eye of the Tiger. Uh, that, uh, the, uh, the, uh, they're suing Huckabee and Davis. They're suing the freaks, well, Mike not, Huckabee and Kim Davis. They're the, not going to win that case. Why not? Because you are allowed fair use of any piece of it's copyright It's copyrighted, material. brother. It's copyrighted. You are allowed fair use. Then how come I can't use anybody's if you song? Run the, if you want to run the song for, if the song lasts three minutes, you want to last, the, you want to take it for three minutes, that's not fair use. But if you use it for a half a minute, it's fair use. They can't sue you for that. So it has, to be, like 30, that 30, it has to be like 30 No, it's not a matter of minutes. Then how come, they give me, how come YouTube gives me a hard time when I use a, a theme song from... Because uh, you so used it too long. And besides, it's one of their... What do you call it? It's one of their uh, their principles. So you get on that side, you're not going to get anywhere with them, even if you get fair use. I'm talking about the court case. It won't fly. You're always um, you're you're always uh, playing devil's advocate with the with the uh, with That's corporations the and the right wing. You're always doing that. You're always. That's the way it is. Hey, it's his song. It's copyrighted, man. But there is such a thing as fair use. Well, I can quote somebody for a half a paragraph or whatever, listen, and that's fair use. Listen, Isaac Perlman did not write uh, of Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Correct. He, because he played Vivaldi Four Season Winter Time, I cannot. Uh, use it uh, as a theme song on YouTube. I would go back and look at that and you would see that it's Itzhak Perlman's. How could it's it be Itzhak Perlman's if, 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 if it's Vivaldi's work? Because he it. has reinterpreted it. You mean the style was he not... He charted it differently or whatever. No. He made it his own. Same thing with Mozart, the same thing with uh, Bach. You know. No, usually they're played as they are, and then they they are they have they are in the public domain. Like box staccato. So it's, it's in the public domain. But if somebody like uh, uh, what was the guy that played the trumpets that wrote those songs for uh, Herb Alpert? Herb Alpert. Supposing he takes uh, uh, somebody's uh, song from the public domain and he makes it his own and reinterprets it, etc. That's his now. Well, ap apparently there was a deal between the dating game and Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass because they played his music. You know, so. Yeah, but he got paid for it. Yeah, he probably did. Well, not probably. You either get permission or you buy it, the rights to use it, right? Or you, get, or you get permission. Now, uh, uh, Bernie uh, uh, Sanders uh, was offered Rockin' in a Free World for free. Because the guy got pissed that um, Donald Trump was using "Rockin' in the Free World." Mm -hmm. Now Trump used somebody else's song, that, and they're pissed off. Mm -hmm. Another song, copyrighted song, Donald Trump just decided to use without permission. I guess that's what happens when you're a multi-billionaire. You feel you can do whatever you like, and or the guy who wrote the song feels that he can get some moolah out of that multi-billionaire. Out of Trumpy. The point is, I said, if they if they take that case, the eye of a tiger, to uh, to court, yeah, they will probably lose. The only they reason the lose. only reason why those two musicians made such a big stink immediately is because I think it's because they they can't stand Donald Trump. They probably That's correct. And, and and how dare he use my song? I will never vote for that clown, That's that correct. buffoon. That happened back in George Bush's day. They didn't like one of the songs that he was playing, his campaign. Well, push, push in the bush. 
<laughs> a wave of criticism from Republicans and Democrats alike rose on Thursday after GOP presidential front runner Donald Trump insulted the physical appearance of Carly Fiorina. <laughs> Poor Carly. Not Carly Simon, but Carly uh, Figurina. Fiorina. His party's only female house contender. Oh, because the big bad man was White mean. House mean to the woman, the only woman. Well, I was there. talking about her persona. Look at that face. I don't want to look at it. You look at it. It's a new test for the candidacy of the brash talking Trump whose standing in opinion polls has surged despite a series of comments that might well have doomed a traditional politician. Oh, I heard Michelle Bachman says uh, again, 9-11 is God's punishment. She came out of the woodwork and she had to say what she had to say. Uh, what, what is the punishment for? Usually they blame gays, homosexuals. Uh, generally they, uh, they bring that up. I see. It's not because they have the wrong God, is it? They never mentioned the that The first uh, commandment. Right. It's not because of that. The wrong God, yeah. I idolatry, money, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like one sin is no better or worse than any other sin. Sin is a sin. Uh, uh, um, uh, but they're very uh, obsessed with what people do in their bedrooms, Republicans. They care a lot. Who, who you bang and how you bang them. Except in the case of Kim Davis. Nobody, who wants to bang her? Well, they allow her to marry five times. I'd rather have a blow-up doll than, than an ugly, inbred-looking freak. And be divorced for. Freak. That's okay. But giving licenses to gays is not okay. See, they don't, they don't really know the Bible at all, apparently. Oh, that is correct! Obviously, you know. But they make you believe they do, don't they? Yeah. Because they have supporters. And what, they were at the rally the other day, weren't they? Uh, yeah. Those supporters. And what did you say about that verse? Don't look at the splinter in my eye if you have a plonk. A plank in your eye? Yes, you like will criticize the splinter in my own, you know, eye, and you got a plank in yours. You don't notice that. Ooh. You know, they got some plank, uh, Republicans. Republican Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindo. Oh, gosh. Called Trump a madman. Oh, I love it when Republicans fight with each other. A madman. Well, I mean, he is a madman. He's a. He, he, he's a He's an egomaniac. He's what the hell is Bobby Jindal? He's full. Well, Bobby Jindal is just a right-wing asshole piece of shit. He just happens <laughs> to be a little smaller, smaller and skinnier. Yeah, piece of shit. But he's still the same and still seeking, uh, you know, uh, to be uh, uh, singled out. He's an Indian man who who forgot his roots. Because if he remembered his Indian roots, he wouldn't be conservative. Because India, the the people of India, are are, are in poverty. If, if you want to look at the, the the greater part of the huge population that they have, most of them are are poor. Uh, it's like that the, that Philippine, uh, the good-looking Philippine girl in Hawaii, who's uh, yeah. conservative, uh, Michelle. Uh, was it Balkan? Falcon? Malcolm. 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 Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> Michelle Malcolm, whatever the hell her name is. She's Philippine. Hey, most of the Philippine population is poor. And you're conservative and you're pro corporate and you're pro fat cat. Mm -hmm. You're forgetting your roots. Well, Bobby Jindal, I would say, is the same way. Mm -hmm. And the Uncle Tom uh, Republican blacks are the same way. Carson. Carson and. Um, and the uh, pizza guy, uh, 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 Hurricane uh, uh, Herman Cain. Oh, well, Cain is gone. He's he's nothing. Anymore. He's not relevant anymore. That's correct. Yeah. While Democrat Hillary Clinton said <clears throat> the billionaire, a real estate mogul, 
seems to delight in insulting women every chance he gets. Yeah, but she's Carly Fiorina, man. Hey, babe, my name is Carly Fiorina. She's as ugly. I, I don't know who discusses me more. I, no, I think Kim Davis is more repulsive, honestly. Much more repulsive. Much more. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush dismissed Trump's latest comments as small and inappropriate. And Fiorina, the target of Trump's latest insult, suggested she was getting under his skin. In some ways, Thursday was a day no different from others in an unpredictable 2016 presidential primary campaign. A messy contest in which Trump has emerged as a dominant and divisive figure. But the day also featured an escalation of criticism from Trump's detractors in both parties. The spark was an interview published Wednesday by Rolling Stone, in which Trump said Fiorina's face would make her unelectable. Maybe uh, un un unfuckable, but I don't know about it. Well, I wouldn't vote for her. The magazine quoted Trump as saying of the former technology executive, Look at that face! Oh, she's a technology? She was a technology? She was the CEO of Hewlett Packard! They kicked her out! Yeah, well, well, you know, uh, 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 female geeks are generally not very good looking. You know, or male geeks too. You know, high tech whiz. Look at that face. Look at Would that anyone face. vote for that? Oh, that's how he said it? Can you imagine that, the face of our next president? He said that too? It's kind of cruel. I, 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 the chorus of anti-Trump Republicans now includes Bush, Jindal, Kentucky Senator Paul, uh, uh, Rand Paul, and former New York Governor Pataki. Pataki's in it? Potato Head Pataki. He didn't do shit for New York. I didn't know Pataki jumped in there. And retired. Neurosurgeon Ben Cash, who is running second to Trump Potato head. in several early polls, and who challenged Trump's Christian faith this week. In a speech at the National Press Club in Washington, Jindal called Trump an egomaniacal madman who has no principles. I have to agree with Jindal. In, th in this case, only. You know, New York... He described him as a carnival act. Carnival act. Well, he is pure entertainment. I mean, you know, I agree with that also. You know, he's a, I, I enjoy listening to him. He's just funny. He's very entertaining, very funny in his mannerisms and his facial expressions and he talks with his hands and you know, his voice, everything about him. His orange face, you know, with the fake tan. The silly summer season is over, Jindal said. It's time to get serious about saving our country. It's time to send Donald Trump back to reality TV. Oh, so Jindal he has a serious plan for saving America? A Republican has a serious plan? That should be interesting. At a rally in Columbus, Ohio, <coughs> Clinton took a swipe at Trump, whose derogatory remarks about Fiorina are merely his latest insults directed at women. Well, Hillary, she's got a lot of wrinkles, man, you know. Of course she defended uh, Fiorina. There is one particular candidate who just seems to delight 
and insulting women every chance he gets. Except good looking women. Clinton told the cheering crowd of her supporters. I have to say. He likes his daughter. If he emerges, I would love to debate him. <laughs> that should be quite interesting. He'll Donald eat, Trump. He'll eat her up for lunch. Donald Trump will make her feel like shit. Donald Trump. He there. He's he's not going to be gentle with her because she's female. Let's put it that way. The Fiorina remark is only the latest comment directed at women that's led to criticism of Trump. But he's got his following, Dr. Bill. He's got his following. After the first GOP debate during which Fox News' <coughs> Megyn Kelly asked him about past derogatory comments about women, Trump launched a series of insults at the TV anchor. Well, she... She, most likely she probably was accurate. Including telling CNN that Kelly had blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her wherever during the debate. Mm. Maybe, maybe, she was, she, maybe, maybe she was menstruating. Maybe she was menstruating. He was trying to say she acted like a bitch because she was on the rag. Well, that you can interpret that, but what, you know, when you have blood coming out of your eyes and and, and, and elsewhere, you are pissed off, man. Yeah, it's your the, head is on fire. It's the elsewhere that was interpreted to be she was yeah. on the rag. Yeah, the elsewhere comment, just like the uh, comment about wanting to date his daughters, causing. Um, you know what uh, Joy Behar says on the View? She yelled at him and says, "Brains." It says. Who, the, who were you, uh, uh, Woody Allen? And and he burst out in laughter. She oh, said, he yeah, said to Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. Uh, no, 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 Sunni, Chinese woman. Sunni, Japanese the, girl. The adopted daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Trump says, that's a good one, Joy. He gave her a high five. He, he cracked them up. Who are you, Woody Allen? That, you know, that's weird, man. That, don't, don't, don't say that. They were, they were getting it got in this case. Trump tried to paper over his remarks about the arena in an interview with CNN, saying he wasn't talking about her appearance, but her persona. In a subsequent interview on ABC's The View, he said, I do have a very big heart. And then he offered a message directly to women. I want to say that I cherish women, and I will protect women, and I will take care of women. And I have great respect for women. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a big daddy. Except the ugly ones. Hey, where's... to be a big daddy. When is Rosie women? O'Donnell going to come out, uh, yell, you know, doing a shtick about Rosie Donald? Rosie O'Donnell has her problems. Her adopted daughter left home. Went back to her original mama. Oh, gee. I uh, thought... That I thought, don't sit too well, you know? In other words, her adopted daughter uh, went out to, she she seeked her original... She went out with a guy, parents. first of all. Yeah. And then they found him. Now she's with her regular biological mommy. After she raised her. So they went out to, they, they well, you know, an adopted child, once they're told they're adopted, they wonder what their real real parents are like and and you know what I mean it's a curiosity that it is going to take place it's gonna happen why did you get rid of me yeah that's it why did you abandon me see that, that's what bothers them why did you abandon me and you know just like um, am I such a bad person just like a, a, a woman uh, can't stop a loving and abusive man because it was that the guy is <clears throat> in other words they figure that's the best they can do that, in other words instead of saying that that lousy biological mom abandoned me and dumped me that that bitch I want nothing to do with her I got yeah. my adopted mom Rosie she treats me great with love and everything and I'm going 
instead of thinking that way, they want to seek out the person who dumped them. Yeah. So I would say that's a, a problem. Yeah. Trump said his wife and daughter have encouraged him <coughs> to speak more about women's health issues because they know how strongly and committed I am to it. It's committed. Jeb Bush and to a large extent Hillary are not committed Yikes. like I'm committed, he said. Oh, he, he should be committed, all right. Bush, who has emerged as a leading Trump critic in recent weeks, came to Fiorina's defense. He tweeted that the demeaning remarks are small and inappropriate for anyone, much less a presidential candidate. Carly and country deserve better. Enough, Bush said. This was Jeb? That is correct. He tweeted. Tweeted. Oh, he knows how to tweet? He has... That's he correct. Had, he Maybe has he that. has a Twitter, a Twitter, a Twitter, a Twitter. He, he, he has that much intelligence to know how to use Twitter? Or he has a Twitter. I didn't think he had it in him. I a don't tweet either. Hey. Maybe he hires a Twitter. There you go. He's a bush. Why should he tweet? The rich don't do anything. If Trump's comments or the criticism that followed has any impact on his place atop the Republican polls, it will be the first time in 2016 race that words that might seriously damage a more traditional politician would come back to haunt him. Yeah. Fiorina declined to address Trump's latest insult directly. She probably got really hurt. But maybe. Devastated maybe. Just maybe. I'm getting under his skin a little bit. She said, "Well, she's because very, I am climbing in the polls. That's a possibility. I think she's at six percent. Whoa! Wow. That ladder must be very small. Wow. She's extremely annoying. Uh, um, um. She was uh, one speech. She she was a little too pro-Israel." Carrying on, well, but that's typical Republican, right? They're yes, they're very pro-Israel because they're all war hawks. Because they yeah. want to go in there and make more moolah. That's correct. The uh, military-industrial complex. I got two Kim Davises here. We might as well get them in. Might as well. Because, we have been on uh, the subject. Because I'm not. <coughs> I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grow after the show. I am so weary of Kim Davis's ugly face and her big m freaking forehead uh, and 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 her 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 that grimace with her hands up in the air and it. Uh. Who is really being physically oppressed in Rowan County, Kentucky? To the point where the local clerk feels the need to disobey federal law. That's right. Do your stinking job. Or, or go home. What person or group of people are suffering the loss of personal dignity or the threat of harm and are being kept from living their God-given life to its fullest? Keep your person... Is it the clerk? Who is oppressed? By current law, when you don't do your job, it's not you're not it's not oppression. You ju you're just not doing your job that you're paid for. Is the law of the land preventing her from living her life to the fullest, or from expressing her value as a human being to the fullest? Is she not free to express herself openly and publicly in any way on the issue at hand? Since when? Does her religious liberty extend to interfering with the civil rights of others? The civil rights and also revenue. Don't, uh, doesn't a gay couple have to pay a fee? $35 and change. So she's rejecting every gay couple that's $35, another $35, another $35. 
she's it's like a person refusing a customer in a retail store I don't like your face I don't want to take care of you you know I don't want your money go goodbye you know uh, didn't we go through that yeah the, uh, right the restaurant or the, whatever the pizzeria whatever the hell it was no it was called the civil rights era oh yeah yeah Jesus Christ man you couldn't a black man couldn't go nowhere couldn't go anywhere you know couldn't sit at the goddamn counter because I had to sit in the back of the bus. Couldn't use the same water fountain. Water fountain, piss water place, fountain. you know. Uh, 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 restrooms. Yeah, I mean, you know, we already went through that, but they want to do away with all all yeah. these civil we rights. Jim Crow back, baby. They don't even like the the, the, the suffrage. What do you get? The women's rights movement. No. Slavery back again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, it's her job to issue marriage license. It's her job. It's, her job is not to to pry into the personal lives of anyone. Her job is to simply take the fee and issue the license. The Bible oh, says it correctly: "Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's." And render unto God that which is God. Look, the fact if that you can't put your name on the goddamn certificate, back off. Go but into the back room, lady. You've got six other goddamn uh, 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 deputies there who can put their fucking name on the goddamn right. certificate. But well, honestly, uh, uh, the 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 the, per the personal lives of of people are not her concern, really. It's none of her fucking business if they're gay or not. Her, her business of is... Of course not. If the law, usually the law says, I don't know how it is in other states, but in New Jersey you have to have a witness to get a marriage license and you have to show proof of, it's like with motor vehicle, proof of address. You gotta kind of, you gotta identify yourself. I don't know why, please. And then you give the fee. And then they issue the license. Mm -hmm. That's all. What you do at home, what you do in your bedroom is none of her ugly ass business. It's none of her fucking business. Well, it used to be that they wouldn't give you a license if you were black and white. Interracial. Oh, yeah. It could be anything. Oh, yeah. It could be. What about that woman, ice cream woman? She don't want to sell to a Jew. But there are pastors that won't marry an interracial couple. Down south, yes, there are. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, what's next? I, I, I read a very funny banner about about this. What's next? A cashier at a supermarket happens to be Jewish and Muslim, and and they and they they might say to a customer, "Oh, I can't ring up this smoked ham." Uh, no pork. No pork. I cannot touch this. It is pork. Thank you. Go go to that other register, and they'll ring up your ham for you. Uh, you know, I mean, where does it end? This but, re religious freedom bullshit. But Kim Davis didn't even want to do that. You see, she just wanted to deny it. Period. She she didn't want to let the other no, deputies no. sign it. No, she wanted to play judge and That's jury. Correct. She wanted to be Judge Dredd. Yes. And say you're no good. You're an abomination. No, no marriage license. Not even thinking, sorry to skeleton, not even thinking of getting somebody else to issue. No, or backing off. Right. One letter writer rehashes past acts of civil disobedience, such as operators of the Underground Railroad, Christians who hid Jews during World War II, mm -hmm. and civil rights protesters. But in these cases, whole groups of people were being treated as second-class citizens and as people who did not enjoy equal standing with other citizens. Therefore, in those situations, many Christians felt the need to disobey current laws, which they saw as an affront to a religiosity-informed view of justice. Where is the threat to Kim Davis's life? and well-being that is being perpetrated under current law regarding same-sex marriage. Why is she the victim? How is she, a self-protest Christian, professed, being prevented 
from living out her interpretation of Christian marriage in her own life with her own partner. Self-professed. I'm a Christian too, and I don't get it. She took the job. She, she knew what the job title was. She knew what the job entailed, what she was expected. Her, her employment responsibilities, she was aware of them. Do your fucking job or go to fuck home. It's as simple as that. It's none of your business what people do in their private life. Honestly, to, to mind your own fucking business. And now I hear there's some kind of posse that wants to uh, protect Kim Davis in case they try to arrest her a second time when she uh, goes above the law. Uh, you she know what? She wasn't arrested. Uh, 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 she was charged with contempt of court. Okay? Well, they just need to impeach her then. Plain well, and that's simple. the people of Kentucky. Yeah. We have nothing to do with that. You know. The judge put her in jail for contempt of his court. Now, as Mr. Fluckerby said the other day, if anybody has to go to jail, then let it be me. Go. Go. Isn't that nice of him? Yeah, he's trying to get attention because he's so low in the polls. I read the letters supporting the jailing of Rowan County, Kentucky clerk Kim Davis. So the authors want religious people to put their religious conscience where the sun doesn't shine Ugh. and to obey the law. Yes, yes, obey the law and mind your own fucking business. That's what I say. How about underground railroad operators? Should they have obeyed the law affirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court in the Dred Scott decision and returned runaway slaves to their owners? How about Christians during World War II hiding Jews in defiance of the laws? How about civil rights protesters against separate but equal discrimination, another law affirmed by the Supreme Court? Well, if that's the case, should they have just obeyed the law? That's the case. Go in the back and get another a co-worker to do it. If it bothers her that much, you know, I mean, that's all she had to do, like we said before. First of all, Jim Davis was not obeying any law. She was obeying her perception of a law Yeah, if, if issued it, by God. Then. If there's a law... Not the government. Or yeah. whatever. If there's an anti-discrimination law on the books already, you are breaking law. Yeah. Okay. So, Kim Davis is, what she's saying is, hey, I'm above the law. Correct. Because my version of Christianity says that I don't want to do anything for, for a gay couple. Correct. I don't even, uh, that, that, you know, that she ha cannot accept them as human beings or accept them having rights or anything. And, uh, they I mean, are sodomites! Right, but what, what, what people, what religious cultists <laughs> and what, what the media and, and doesn't understand is all this uh, 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 preoccupation with religion, religious freedom, uh, and everything. Excuse me. No, even whether you be a zealot lunatic or whether you be a hell of a nice guy or a woman, religion has not been proven. So why is, why are politicians and the media and everybody making such a big fuss over religion if it is not part of uh, uh, science, it is not part of secular living, it is not part of the Constitution, it is something that is not proven. So why is everybody making a big fuss about it and so obsessed about it? Is it an American thing? Yeah, in this case it is because 
all you need to do in certain sections of America is declare that you are religious or a Christian and you are accepted. You see the case with Duggar? Oh, the molester? Yeah. Yeah, Duggar. He was accepted. Duggar was uh, digging, down, digging down the pants of his sister. Yeah. He has a, uh, a kind of a, 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 a primitive, goofy, inbred look about him. You ever see Duggar's face? Yes, I have. Yeah, he has like a, like a Neanderthal look to him, like like he like he's inbred. The Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy mm -hmm. said judges should obey should should disobey the law on mandatory minimum sentences if their conscience tells them that would be unjust. So it is okay for judges to follow their conscience and to disobey the law. So why have But laws? not for an elected county official. So why even have laws if, if they're that frivolous? Well, what law is he talking about? She, she's, not, she's not obeying or disobeying any law except the federal law. But she's not, there's no law that she is obeying. No. It's a law that she believes God has given her. It's a belief. Right. So it's a perception. So the, her job tells her you must issue the marriage license. Correct. The federal government says you if you must not you must not deny the gay couple. You must not discriminate. Discriminate. Thank you. Against the gay couple. So it's her perception of how she personally feels about gay people that caused her not to do her job. Yes, but she's she's blaming God. A higher law she was obeying. She has a bat from a God. High, yes, yes. Ah. All of those Christians down there do. So they have bat phones to God, and they could prove absolutely what their pastors taught them. You saw that guy prove it the other day when the snake bit him. And he died. Yep. While Kentucky cur cur clerk, Kentucky Fried Kip Chicken, Kip Davis, may not agree with the marriage equality law as an elected public official <sighs> under Section Two Two Eight oh, of the Kentucky Constitution, she took the following oath. Pay close attention. I do solemnly swear or affirm, as the case may be, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue a citizen thereof." Unquote. So she went against her oath. Also. Correct? Yeah. And Mike Huckabee supports all this. So. Exactly. So there's no support to be given here whatsoever. She doesn't have a leg to stand on. She's um she looks like she sits on her ass most of the day. Yeah, she's, uh, in, uh, in reality, as a human being, to me, Kim Davis is a non-entity. She's, she's, uh, she's a pathetic, yeah. troll, look, uh, ugly, ugly looking, uh, uh, a slithery little redneck creature. Um, and, um, because of what she did, that's why she's in the spotlight. That's it. No more, no less. It's not Kim Gabe Davis's job to legislate, uh. promulgate, or interpret federal law to satisfy her own religious convictions. Instead, what she did was commit an act of official misconduct. Her actions were unlawful. But it didn't stop there. Davis imposed her personal beliefs 
on her subordinates by not allowing them to issue the marriage licenses to the gay couples. Dave has violated federal law and vowed to continue to do so, an act for which she was jailed for contempt. Kim Davis is just a bona fide bitch. And her subordinates? They are now free to do their jobs and are issuing marriage license to all as is required by law. Good, and they should put this woman on the unemployment line. They should impeach her. I'm so happy we put this 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 beast Kim Davis to rest. That's it. I'm done. Alright. We went way over time. Ah! Way over time. This is the, uh, what is that, the, on Fred, Fred, Fred Flintstone, they had the bird. When work, work was over. Ooh. Ooh. Punch out, punch out, no overtime, punch out. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. He jumps down off a dino. Yeah, the crane was yeah, like a the bron shovel. brontosaurus. Yeah, the bron <laughs> or, was, or was it a diplodocus? I don't know what the hell it was. It had a tail. The diplodocus, a the diplodocus was actually larger than a brontosaurus. The only it's thing like I, a my favorite me. part of the Flintstones, aside from Halle Berry playing Fred Flintstone's secretary to John Goodman in the movie, that was that was a nice step part of Flintstone. I'm talking about the cartoon. Was the brontosaurus a Barbecue ribs that made Fred's car tip, tip over. over. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of car, you see those muscle cars on the Facebook group? Derby puts one up there on now. Early, and then. early, early sixties Chevrolet Corvette, didn't it? Wasn't that a gorgeous looking? The sixty six was not bad either. Vehicle, the vet. Yeah. Beautiful car. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend. It's been very invigorating for me, and uh, we'll see you next time. And yeah. um, that's it. Say goodbye to these people. Goodbye, people. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.